Okay, so we're going to get going and clean the LX boiler that I have in front of me here. Um, this is an LX150. Uh, the cleaning procedure for this is going to be the same for all of the units, whether they're large or small. Uh, we're going to use this as a representation for the time being, just because it's, it's what we have available. And uh, once you know how to clean this, you do know how to clean the bigger ones. There will be a few small differences in the order of operations and the way you take things apart. Uh, but in general, the idea is going to be the same. So with any of the LX products, we recommend that you clean these uh, typically once a year. If it's on propane, it's, it's almost always once a year. If you're on natural gas, sometimes you can get away with every second year. Uh, the general rule is you install it a year later, clean it based on what you find with that first cleaning. If it's really dirty, you're going to have to clean it every year. Uh, if it's not very dirty uh, or not dirty at all in some cases, you may be able to wait uh, two years. Uh, but as a rule, uh, one year is the recommended service interval. With all the LX series, uh, they've all got a touchscreen user interface similar to this one. Uh, they're all designed to be remova removable, so take the screw out here, and that lets your display fall forward. Uh, on a production boiler, there'll be a screw on either side. You'll have two more screws in the top of the boiler. Uh, if it's one of the smaller ones, like the 400 and down. When you get into the 500 and up, you're going to have a removable panel like this, but it'll be in the rear of the boiler instead, um, and that's so that you can access the wiring and things like that. Once your display is down, you're going to disconnect all the wiring that attaches to your display, and then these just lift up and off, so you can take that away for servicing. Uh, word to the wise, we sometimes see uh, display or screen disconnected, I think is the error code you're going to get. If these wires get pulled on too hard, uh, it can sometimes detach them from the plug. Uh, so if you see something along the lines of screen disconnected, odds are if it's an LX, it's because these wires have been pulled on a bit hard. Uh, have a look, make sure they're securely connected. If you need to, you can cut and, and restrip them and put them back into the plug here. So we'll set that to one side. Top panel is removable. So you just give that a tug and it'll pop off. That gives you access to the top of the boiler so that you can do your combustion testing, set up your gas valve, uh, or in this case, we're going to need access for cleaning. So we'll remove all the wires that are attached to the burner door. You're going to want to remove the wires attached to the gas valve and the combustion blower assembly. We're going to disconnect the tubes that go to the uh, gas valve and connect up to the air intake here. Uh, keep a note of where these tubes go. If they're hooked up incorrectly, the boiler will obviously fail to function properly. And the intake here, you're going to need a 516th nut driver or wrench. You're going to loosen the intake. And these are designed to come apart for servicing. Uh, when you take apart these units, keep an eye for this piece of aluminum tubing that goes through the elbow. Uh, if it gets bent severely to one side or the other, uh, you can actually get an air switch error where the air switch will fail to pull in because the tubing does need to be reasonably well centered. Uh, and it also wants to be pushed uh, all the way inside this clamp. Uh, if for some reason this was, you know, installed improperly, uh, potentially that uh, tubing won't do its job and it won't activate the air switch properly. Now that you've got all that out of your way, if you're doing the LX150 or 200, this step is unique to these products. You have to remove just one screw here and this top bracket and you're just going to pull that out and just pull that down out of your way. Uh, and what we're trying to do is just get this bracket uh, out of the way so that when we pull off the blower it doesn't fetch up on there and, and give us a hard time. Now that that's off, we're going to remove the uh, nuts that secure the burner door.
and then we're going to take this assembly uh, off as one large piece. So we want to pull that out of the way. Have a look at the burner. Make sure that the burner sock, this metal fiber, is, is tight and secure against the burner. Uh, there should be no tears or holes in this. Inspect your igniter. Uh, you want to see 3 16 to about a quarter of an inch gap on the igniter. Uh, there should be no severe bends. It should look pretty pretty good. You can sort of get an idea of how much gap there is between the igniter and the burner. Uh, it's a little bit over a quarter inch, maybe 5 16 uh, Same sort of thing for the flame rod. Uh, you can see there it's about 5 16 of an inch. Um, one thing to watch out for sometimes if your burner is either brand new or if it's starting to deteriorate from age, at the end of these little metal hairs that are on the burner uh, come in contact with the flame rod or the igniter, uh, they can actually cause it to uh, short out and you'll essentially not get the boiler lit or you'll have no flame signal. Uh, so if you have one that's really giving you a hard time, when you take the door off, just inspect, make sure there's no hairs touching that, it could be an issue. The refractory disc uh, is essentially reusable. Uh, if it is damaged, uh, like this one's gotten damaged for multiple cleanings, it probably should be replaced. Uh, it is removable, you just pop it off and put a new one on. If for some reason you have to access the inside of the burner, so if you want to get inside this part here, remove these three screws and that'll take this piece off. This is called the extended air tube. Uh, once you remove that, you can pull the burner out from the center of the door. If need be, you can blow it out uh, with compressed air, vacuum it out, uh, and if it's really got stubborn dirt in there, such as bugs or some sticky residue, you can actually rinse this uh, in the sink and you want to just rinse it through thoroughly with clean clear water and pat it dry don't scrub it with anything but you can pat it dry with paper towel when you're happy it's clean and put that back in service it's pretty rare that you have to clean the burner but if you do have to clean it be just be aware you can use water once your chamber is open um, you'll have a cleaning disc like this that you should not leave inside there um, if you do leave that in there it's going to give you a hard time um, what the cleaning disc does is it protects the refractory that's at the base of the combustion chamber here uh, this was created for a couple of reasons uh, sometimes this screw and washer can become a bit stubborn after they've been through a few thousand heat cycles and it, it's rare that the disc will become damaged if the boiler is well maintained so if you don't have to remove this disc don't take it out don't touch it just cover it up with your disc. You're going to want to take a brush, something like the following, a stiff bristled nylon or plastic brush, and you're really going to scrub that down in between the boiler tubes uh, to make sure that any dirt that's laying in those tubes, you want to make sure you're cleaning that out thoroughly. So you're going to keep scrubbing and flushing this until the water uh, is going to run clean and clear out the condensate drain, which is at the back here, and lots of water. Uh, several gallons of water you want to push it through. I recommend if you can get it uh, a garden hose with a spray nozzle. If you don't have access to that, one of those little pump up uh, one or two gallon garden sprayers, uh, fill it with water or a water vinegar mixture, spray it inside the chamber and keep rinsing and scrubbing until it comes clean and clear. Once you've gone through and done all that and you've got the unit completely clean, you can do a couple of things. Uh, one is take something like a credit card or a gift card um, and you're going to want to shove that down in between the boiler tubes. And that should fit nicely in between the tubes and this verifies that you've got things clean. If you can do that easily in a number of locations, it means that the tubing is clear enough. So we'll just take everybody and show you briefly inside. So what you're looking for is the gaps that are down in between these tubes, it's, it's these gaps in here. Uh, they're what the concern is, is getting down. Down in between those gaps is what's important. If uh, they're not clear, the flue gases can't pass through and the boiler isn't going to run well. What ends up happening is all the flue gas that passes down between the tubes will pass into this section of the heat exchanger where my hands are now, uh, as will all the condensate and the water that you put in to clean it. And the idea is that we want to flush all of this dirt and debris uh, back towards the condensate drain and out through the condensate trap.
Once you're done, you'll want to reassemble the boiler, and that's a basic maintenance. Uh, on the smaller models, you've got a test port that's inside the cabinet up top here. You just take out the plug. That would be your flue gas test analysis port. On the larger units, there's going to be a port either directly in the exhaust termination, so in the actual bit where you stick your exhaust venting, there'll be a little plug you can remove and do your test there. Uh, but the small ones, it's just a, a metal plug you can remove from the venting. 